Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be reading chapter 17 of the Empress's New Quote. I mean, of the School for Good and Evil. And chapter 17 is called The Empress's New Quotes. This is the picture that is um, on, on, in the book for this chapter. Um, okay, so let's start. News of Sophie's failed love spell swept across both schools, and by mid-morning, everyone waited with batted breath to set, get a glimpse of her scarlet F. But when Sophie skipped all her morning classes, it was clear she was too ashamed to show her face. She should have heard the things Tedros called her. Beatrix said to Evergirls at lunch, sitting in a heap of autumn leaves. Agatha turned her tuned her out and looked over at Tedros and the Everboys playing rugby, silver swans gl glimmering on blue knit sweaters. Across the clearing, never shunned group Nevers shunned group activities and sat mostly by themselves. Hester glanced up from spells for suffering and read Agatha's eyes with a shrug, as if so Sophie's whereabouts were the least of her concerns. Now Teddykins now, Teddykins, it's not her fault, Beatrix blathered loudly. The poor girl thinks she's one of us. We should feel sorry for someone so, but we should feel sorry for someone so, but the, her eyes bulged. Agatha saw why. Sophie sashayed into the clearing, dumpy black sack refashioned into a strapless bodice dress. F shimmering over her chest with devil red sequins. She cut her blonde hair even shorter and slicked it down into a shiny bob. Her face was painted geisha white, her eyelids pink, her lips vermili vermil vermilion? Yeah, her lips vermilion. And her glass shoes had not only been re repaired, but healed even taller, which together with the extreme extremely short dress show, showed off long creamy legs. From the shadows she swanned into sun and light exploded off her glitter dusted skin bathing her in heavenly glow. Sophie strutted past Hester who dropped her book past Everboys who dropped who dropped their ball and glided right up to Hort. Let's do lunch she Let's do lunch, she said, sweeping him away like a hostage. Across the field, Tedros' sword fell out of its heat sheath. He saw Beatrix glaring and put it back. During surviving fairy tales, Sophie ignored Yuba's lecture on leaving useful, useful trails and spent the entire class cozying up to her and filling her never pale with the roots and herbs from the blue forest. What are you doing, hissed Agatha? Can you believe it, Aggie darling? They have beetroot, willow bark, lemon wood, and everything else I need to make my old potions and creams. Soon I'll be back to my real self. This wasn't the real Sophie I had in mind. Excuse me, I'm just following your rules. Flaunt my assets, which are many as you can see. Speak through actions. Have I said a word to Tedros? No, haven't. Unless we forget parade competing suitors. Do you know what it takes to survive lunch with Hort to nuzzle the rodent every time I see Tedros looking? Eucalyptics. Eucalyptics. You. Sorry. Eucalyptus, Agatha. I numb my nose with eucalyptus. But in the end, you were right. Listen, you miss up. Oh, I was. Listen, you miss on I was? You reminded me what's important, Sophie. Nodded to Tedros and Everboys ogling her across the thicket. It doesn't matter if you're a never, ever, or whatever. In the end, the fairest of them all wins. She glossed her lips and gave them a smack. You'll see. He'll ask me to the ball before the week's up, and you'll get your precious kiss. So no more negativity, darling. It gives me a headache. Now, where's the worthless Hort? I told him to stay by me at all times. She swept away, leaving Agatha speechless. Sorry, in the school for evil, never sulked through supper, knowing they had a full night of studying ahead, which with spell casting set to begin, the teacher's tests were based 
less on talent now and more in tedious recall. For the next day alone, they had to memorize 80 murder, sch 80 murder schemes for Lady Lessel's first challenge, giant commands for henchmen, and the flower ground map for Sater's geography exam. How will he correct them, Hester Groust? He can't even see. At curfew, Hester, Da, and Anado trudged back from the common room, piled high with books, only to find their rooms turned into a laboratory. Dozens of brilliant colored potions bubbled over open flame flames. Vials of creams, soaps, and dyes littered the shelves. A mess of dry leaves, herbs, flowers ba blanketed the three beds, and in the center of it all sat Sophie, buried under sequins, ribbons, and fabric, testing new concoctions on patches of skin. My God, she is a witch, Annadel gasped. Sophie held up the recipe book for good looks. I stole it from an ever at lunch. Shouldn't you be studying for challenges, Dot asked. Beauty is a full-time job, sighed Sophie, uh, lathering herself in a bright green balm. As you, and you wonder why evers are slow, Hester said. Sophie is back, darlings, and she is just getting started, Sophie mooned. Love is my challenge now, and indeed, though Sophie placed near the bottom in all three challenges the next day, she placed first in attention, arriving to lunch with her black uniform, remolded into a dazzling slip-back toga dress, slashed with blue orchids. Her heels were a full inch taller, her face shimmering bronze, her eyes shadow her eye shadow provocative periwinkle, her lips delicious crimson, and the glittering F on the front of her dress was now com complemented by sweet sequins on the back that read that red is for fabulous. That can't be allowed, Beatrix whined to drooling boys. But she was wearing her uniform, Sophie insisted to teachers. While usually fierce wolves looked just as odd as the boys, Dot swore one even winked at Sophie when it filled her lunch pail. She's making a mockery of villain, villainy, Hester fumed back, even flay, flaying Sophie across the clearing. They should lock her in the doom room permanently. Be still missing, and Dillion. Whatever spooked him must have been pretty bad. The next day, Sophie flunked all her challenges again, and yet somehow avoided failing out of school. Um, though she was clearly the worst each time she saw a 19 pop up instead of a 20. I'm just too lovable to fail. I'm just too lovable to fail, she breathed to mystified classmates. During forest groups, Sophie ignored Yuba's lecture on Scarecrow rival. A survival and scribbled busily in her notebook while Agatha glowered at her black baby doll as Agatha glowered at her black baby doll dress, pink lollipop and sequins spelling F is for fun. Name something else that starts with F, Sophie whispered. I'm trying to listen and so should you, since we'll be here forever. F is for forever. Mm, a bit he heady. What about flirty or fetching or futile? She hasn't even talked to you yet. F is for faith, Sophie said, which I thought you had in me. Agatha grumbled to herself the rest of class, but Sophie almost made her a believer when she arrived the next day in a belly-bearing black halter, pooped mini skirt, spiky pixie hairdo, and heels dyed hot pink. The ever boy spent lunch go go googling, goggling at her between slobbery bites of beef. And yet, even though Sophie could see Tedros sneak peeks at her legs, grit his teeth each time she passed, and sweat when she got too close, he still did not, didn't talk to her. It's not enough, Agatha said, accosting her after Yuba's class. You need better assets. Sophie looked down at herself. I think my assets are quite sufficient. Deeper assets, you idiot. Something inside, like compassion or charity or kindness. Sophie blinked. Sometimes you make wonderful sense, Aggie. He needs to see how good I truly am. She sees reason, Agatha exhaled. Now hurry. If he has someone else to the ball, we'll never get home. 
act that proposed that Sophie Steve Tedros love limericks filled with clever rhymes to leave him secret presence that real depth and thought tried and true strategies both outline in winning your prince Sophie listened um nodding to all of this so when Agatha arrived at lunch the next day she expected to read a first draft draft or a verse or inspect a handmade gift instead she arrived to find a group of 20 never girls crowded in a cr corner of the clearing what's going on over there Agatha asked Hester and Annadale both studying in tree shade she said it was your idea Hester sneered eyes on the her book bad idea Emma said so bad we don't want to talk to it we don't want to talk to you. Confused, Agatha turned to the gathering. A familiar voice rang from its center. Fabulous, darling, but just a little less cream. Agatha ch Agatha's chest tightened. She forced her way through the swarm of nevers until she stumbled into the center and almost died from shock. Sophie sat on a tree stump, a painted wooden sign hanging from, from a branch above her. Lunchtime with Sophie, where beauty meets charity. Today's topic, beetwood for blemish. I can't read that. All around her, never girls were, but let me show you what it works. Like, all around her, never girls were squ squeezing sticky red beetroot cream onto, onto their pimples and warts. Now remember, girls, just because you're ugly doesn't mean you can't be presentable. Presentable, Sophie preached. I'm bringing my roommates tomorrow, Arachne whispered to green-skinned Mona. Agatha gaped, flabbergasted. Then she saw someone sneaking away. Dot? Dot turned meekly, smothered in red cream. Oh, hello. I was just, you know, I thought I should check up on, you know... To see in case, to see if in case she looked at her feet. Don't tell Hester. Agatha had no idea what any of this had to do with winning Tedros's love. But when she tr tried to to corner Sophie after, three never girls shoved in front of her to ask Sophie about picking the best beats. Agatha didn't get a chance in forest groups either because Yuba separated the Evers and Nevers. You must get used to seeing each other as the enemy the first trial by tail is in three weeks the gnome the gnome said now for the trial you'll need a few basic spells there is no one one way to do magic of course some spells require visualization some incantations other hand flicks foot taps magic wands numeric codes or even patterns i mean or even partners yet there is only yet there is one rule common to all spells. From his pocket, he pulled a shiny silver key, the bit shaped like a swan. Evers, right hands, please. Baffled Evers looked at each other and held out their hands. Mm -hmm. mm, you first. Agatha frowned as he grabbed her hand, then her second finger. Wait, what are you going to... Yuba magically plunged his swan key into Agatha's fingertip. The skin went see-through, and the swan sank past tissue veins blood and attached to her bone the gnome turned the 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 gnome turned the bow and her bone painlessly rotated a full circle her fingertip glowed bright orange for just a moment then dulled as yuba withdrew the key bewildered agatha stared at her finger as yuba unlocked the rest of the others then the nevers including sophie who barely glanced up from scribbling in her notebook Magic follows Magic follows feeling. That is our only rule, said the gnome when he, when he was finished. When your finger glows, it means you have summoned enough emotion, enough purpose to perform a spell. You can only do magic when you have deep need and want. Students squinted at their fingers, feeling coaxing with all their might, and soon fingertips started to flicker. Each person a unique color but like a magic wand finger glow is just a training wheel you've warned in the woods you will look like a you will look like a nincompoop if you light up every time you cast a spell 
we will relock your glow once you show control. Her, he grimaced at Hort, uselessly thrusting his finger at rocks, trying to make something happen. If ever. The gnome turned back to the group. In the first year, you'll learn only three types of spells. Water control, weather manipulation, and mogrification. Both plant and animal. And am both plant and animal. Today we will... Today... Oh, sorry. Today we will begin with the last, he said to excited twitters, a simple visualization, visualization, visualization spell, but highly effective for escaping enemies. Now, since your clothes won't fit after you mogrify, it's easier if you're not wearing any. The students stopped tittering, but I suppose, but I suppose we'll do, the Oba said. Who wants to go first? Everyone raised their hands except two. Agatha, who was pr praying now more than ever that Sophie had a plan to get home, and Sophie, who was too busy writing her next lecture, bath is not a f bath is not a four-letter word to care about any of this. By the third day, by the third day on her stump, Sophie had thirty freshly bathed never girls attend. Just say no to dry. Um, by the third day on her stump, Sophie had 30 freshly bathed never girls attend. Just say no to drab. Now Professor Manley says a never must be ugly. That's, that ugly means uniqueness, power, freedom. So here's my quest question to Professor Manley. How do you expect us to feel unique, empowered, or free in this? She roared, waving the dumpy black robes like an en enemy flag. The cheer was so loud that across the clearing, Beatrix's, plan, Beatrix's pen slipped and ruined her ball gown sketch. It's that mentally ill Sophie, Beatrix snapped, still looking at a ball for a ball date. As she murmured Tedros, aiming his next horseshoe throw. Still looking for a ball date, is she? murmured Tedros, aiming his next horseshoe throw. Worse, now she's trying to convince the Nevers they're not losers. Tedros missed his shot in surprise. Agatha didn't even try to see Sophie after lunch with Never girls mobbing her for style advice. She didn't try the next day either when an impromptu shoe burning erupted after Sophie's lecture on abandoning all the clumps and wolves ran around whipping students back to the tower. And she certainly didn't try the, the next when every Neverville showed up for Sophie's talk on fitness for the unfit. Except Hester and Andadil, who cornered Agatha after lunch. This idea keeps getting more rotten, Andadil said. So, so rotten, we're not your friends anymore. Boys, balls, kisses, all your problems. All your problem now. Hester snarled demon twitching on her neck. As long as it doesn't mess with me winning captain, I could give a hog's be I could give a hog's behind. What what sorry. As long as it doesn't mess with me winning captain, I could give a hog's behind what you two do. Got it? The next day Agatha hid in the tunnel of trees waited for the sound of high heels on dead leaves and tackled Sophie in a flying heap. What is it today? Cuticle creams? Teeth whiteners? More abdominal exercises? If you want to talk to me, you can wait in line with everyone else, Sophie yelled. Malevolent makeovers? Back in black is the new black? Yoga for villains? Do you want to die here? You said show him something deeper. Isn't this compassion? Isn't this kindness and wisdom? Wisdom, I'm helping those who can't help themselves. Excuse me, St. Teresa, but the goal here is Tedros. How is this accomplishing anything? Accomplishment. Such a vague word. But I'd consider that an accomplishment, wouldn't you? Agatha followed Sophie's look out the tunnel. The crowd in front of her stump was a hundred nevers deep. Only there was one hovering in back who didn't look like the rest. A golden-haired boy in blue rugby sweater. 
in a blue rugby sweater. Agatha released Sophie in shock. You should come, Sophie called as she flounced out of the tunnel. Today is about dry, damaged hair. In front of the stump, Arachne's one eye glowered, glowered at Tedros. Why is Prince Pretty Face here? Yeah, back to your side, Everboy, Mona sni snipped, pelting him with tree mold. More and ever girls started to heckle him, and Tedros shrank back anxiously. He wasn't supposed to. He wasn't used to being unpopular, but just as he was booed away, we welcome everyone, Sophie admonished as she swept to her, her, well, as she swept to her stump. Tedros came back every day that week. He told his mates he just wanted to see what Sophie was wearing, but there was more to it. With each new day, he watched her teach misshapen villains how to straighten their hunches, hold eye contact, and enunciate, enunciate their words. He watched Neverboy skeptically so skulk on their on the fringes at first, but only t to soon bash her Sophie for advice on sleeping better, masking body odor, and managing their tempers. At first, the wolves yawned through these assemblies, but Tedros could see them listening as more and more nevers showed up for le Sophie's lectures. Soon, the villains began to debate her prescriptions at supper at supper, and over dr driggy tea in common rooms. They started to sit together at lunch, defend each other in class, and stop making jokes about their losing streak. For the first time in 200 years, evil had hope, all because of one girl. By the end of the week, Tedros had had a seat in the front row. It's working. I can't believe it. Agatha gushed as she walked Sophie to the tunnel of trees. He might say he loves you. He might kiss you this week. We're going home. What's tomorrow's topic? Eating your Eating your words, Sophie said, swishing ahead. At lunch the next day, Agatha stood in the line of a, for a basket of artichoke and olive tar tartines, dreaming about the hero's welcome she and Sophie would get when they returned home. Gabaldon would erect statues of them in the square, feed them in ceremony sermons, stage a musical about their lives, and teach school children about the two girls who saved them from the curse. Her mother w would have a thousand new patients, her reaper fresh trout every day, and she would have her pictures in the town scroll, <coughs> in the town scroll, and anyone who had ever dared to mock her would now grovel, would now grovel at her. What a joke. Agatha turned to Beatrix, who was watching never Nevers throwing around Sophie and revealing black in a re who's watching Nevers throwing around Sophie in a revealing black sari and sharp heeled fur booties for her lecture on how to be the best at everything like me as if she's the best Beatrix snorted I think she's the best never I've ever seen a voice said behind her Beatrix whirled to Tedros is she now, Teddy? And I think it's all a big fairy tale. Tedros followed her eyes to the ranking boards, smoldering in soft sunlight on the blue forest gates. On another board, Sophie's name hung off the bottom, off the bottom, bottom, pecked to holes, pecked to holes by robins, number 120 out of 120, and the Empress's new clothes to be. Precise, Beatrix said, and strutted away. Tredros didn't go to see Sophie that day. Word spread that he found it sad to watch Nevers pin their hopes on the worst girl in school. The next day, Sophie showed up to a deserted stump. The wooden sign, the wooden sign had been defaced. Lunchtime with stu with Sophie, where beauty meets. Where beauty meets charity, charity crossed out. Instead, stupidity is written above it. Here, I'll show you. I told you to pay attention, Agatha shouted as they waited in pouring rain after Yuba's class for wolves to open the gates. Between sewing new outfits, brewing new makeup, preparing new lectures, I can't worry about class, Sophie sobbed under a black parasol. I have my fans to think about. 
of which you now have none, Agatha yelled. She could see Hester smirking at her from the group six huddle. Three bottom, ra bottom ranks, and you fail, Sophie. I don't know how you how you've survived this long. They don't let me fail, no matter how bad I am. Why do you think I stopped studying? Agatha tried to make sense of this, but couldn't focus with her fingertips burning. Ever since Yuba unlocked it, it glowed whenever she was angry, as if raring to do a spell. But how did you get all those high ranks before, she said, hiding her hand in her pocket. That was before they made us read. I mean, do I look like I care to poison a comb, how to pluck toad eyes, or how to say may across your bridge and troll? Here I am trying to improve these villains, and you want me to memorize a recipe for children new and you want me to memorize the recipe for children noodle soup, Agatha? Did you know that to boil to boil a child you have to wrap them in parchment first? Otherwise they won't be properly cooked and might wake up in your pot. Is that what you want me to learn? How to hurt and kill, how to be a witch? Listen, you need to win back respect through intentional evil. No shunt. Then we're doomed. Then we're doomed, Agatha snapped. Sophie exhaled angrily and turned away. <laughs> Suddenly her expression changed. What in the... She gawked at the Evers ranking board. Tack, attack to the gates. Number one, Tedros of Camelot. 71 points. Number two, Beatrix of Haunt Holy. Of Jaunt Jolie. 84 points. Um... Number number three, Rena of Pashi Dunes, 88 points. Number four, Agatha of Woods Beyond, 96 points. I don't know if you can see that. She has the most points. But you're, but, but you're you, Sophie cried. And I do my homework, Agatha barked. I don't want to learn dove calls or practice fainting or sue hanger shifts, but I'll do whatever it takes to get us home. But Sophie wasn't listening. A naughty grin spread across her face. Agatha crossed her arms. No way. First of all, teachers will catch us. You'll love my curse. Curse is homework. It's all about tricking princess, princes, and you hate boys. Second, your roommates will tell on you. And you'll love my uglification homework. We le we're learning to scare children, and you hate children. If Tedros finds out, we're dead. And look at your finger. It glows when you're upset. I can't do that. It's a fluke. Look, it's even brighter now. You're born to be a vi- Agatha stomped. We're not cheating. Sophie fell silent. W wolves unlocked the blue forest gates and students surged into the tunnels. Neither Sophie nor Agatha moved. My roommates say I'm 100% evil, Sophie said softly. softly. But you know the truth. I don't know how to be evil. Not even 1%. Plus, so please don't ask me to go against my own soul, Agatha. I can't. Her voice caught. I just can't. She left um, She left Agatha under the umbrella. As Sophie joined the her storm, the storm rinsed the sheen out of her hair, the glitter off her skin, until Agatha couldn't tell her from the other villains. Guilt flushed through her, burning her finger bright as burning her finger bright as the sun she hadn't told sophie the truth she had the same idea to do sophie's evil work and squashed it no not because she was afraid she'd get caught she was afraid she might like it all 100 percent that night sophie had nightmares tedros kissing goblins at the growling from a well with cute with cupid wings hester demon chasing her through sewers until the beast rose out of rose out of dark water bloody hands snatching and sophie lunged past him and locked herself in the doom room only there was a new torture waiting her father in a wolf mask sophie jolted awake her roommates were fast asleep she sighed nestled into her pillow and bolted back up there was a cockroach on her nose she started to scream it's me the roach hissed sophie closed her eyes wake up Wake up, wake up. She opened them. They were still there. What's my favorite muffin? She wheezed. F flowerless blueberry brand. The roach spat. Any more stupid questions? 
Sophie picked the bug off her nose. It had the same bulging eyes and sunken cheeks. How in the world? Mogrification. We've been learning it for two weeks. Meet me in the common room. Agatha the cro cockroach glared back as she skittered for the door. And bring your books. Alright, that was chapter 17. The next chapter is chapter 18. The Roach and the Fox. So, yeah. Um, so we're currently, we've read quite a bit of the book. We've read, read like 265 pages, but, um, I really hope you enjoyed the chapter 17. I thought it was a great chapter, um, and I will see you in the next chapter. And all the previous chapters are already posted on my YouTube channel, so go ahead and check those out if you haven't already. Uh, but thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.